Let's take a look at how we can leverage iOmega's NAS software running within a VM, specifically within vSphere. First, we're going to deploy the OVF template. I've pre-deployed this to my workstation. We're going to browse to it and run through the setup. Let's change the name to iOmega Soho ESX. We're going to put it in the iOmega resource pool. And we'll put it on my NFS data store. This is actually running on other storage in my data center. Let's map my network and we're complete. In a moment we'll have a running instance of iOmega's software running within a VM. Now this product supports iSCSI and NFS as well as SIFS. Uh, we're going to be focusing this demo on iSCSI and NFS. So let's um, take a look at the usage there. We've got about 8 gigs um, out of the box with this VM. Later we're going to actually expand the disk and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's power it on and uh, we'll grab a console here and just validate that uh, we're powered up as well as I want to log in real quick um, using the um, root user and just check that I have an IP address. I have DHCP running on my network so run an IF config and you can see zero is up and running and we have an IP. The next thing we want to do is um, install the iOmega Store Center software and I need this initially to actually go out and discover the running instances in my network and then start to manage them. This is just a Windows ex uh, install and I'm launching it from within an Explorer window and uh, it's pretty straightforward easy to use. Once it's installed we'll be able to literally um, leverage the tool to initially manage the system and then from that point forward we can manage running a standard web browser and just pointing at the um, the IP address of the of the actual device. So we'll launch the application and initially it'll go out and try to discover it'll find it and then from that point forward we can simply use the web browser. If we right click select devices you'll see that it's discovered the device we can select manage and then we're running um, a window into the system. First thing we're going to do is change the device name. We'll call it ESX iOmega. It wants to specify an email address. I'll just put in uh, admin at emc.com. Set our time zone. Optionally, we could set up our time servers as well. And then it's going to actually reset the software. And in a moment, we'll be back into the main administrative tool ready to configure. So there we are. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the disks and take a look at what we've got. Well, like I said before, we have about 8 gigs out of the box for this OVF. What we're going to do is behind the scenes, go back into the VM and expand the associated VMDK files. Now this is vSphere, so I can do this, of course, online, increase the size of these VMDKs. I'm going to make each one of these 50 gig in size. I also have this on an NFS data store, which by default supports thin provisioning. So these are only going to take up as much space as they're actually consuming. So once we add the storage to our VM, I can simply go back to the interface and running a special URL, support HTML, I can go behind the scenes, select reset data protection, and then initiate essentially the reconfiguration of the storage. Now mind you, if you had data on the system, it would be lost at this point. It effectively recycles the box, takes it back to factory uh, reset defaults. But you can see that it's actually added the additional space, and at this point we can leverage it for things like iSCSI and NFS. We go into settings, select iSCSI, and we enable that service. What we're going to do now is add an iSCSI drive. So we're going to go to storage, iSCSI drive, add in a name. Here I'll use an iOmega iSCSI, and let's create a 5 gig LUN. Now I haven't set any security parameters or any access control. This is pretty much just straight out of the box defaults. You can see now we have our 5 gig LUN running up and running and online. Let's now go into vSphere, into our storage configuration, and we'll configure iSCSI. So actually this system hasn't been configured to use it, so we're going to use a software initiator with an ESX. We'll enable the initiator. 
we're going to go into our dynamic discovery tab and set the um, IP address of the actual management interface which is going to be advertising the iSCSI storage. It's going to prompt us to rescan the HPA and it's going to immediately discover the 5 gig one. So we'll go to the um, HPA and we can see we have a device waiting for us. Then we go into storage, add storage, select disk LUN, there's the 5 gig LUN and of course we're going to identify it, provide a name for it. Let's call it uh, iOmega iSCSI. Give it a block size. Next and we're up and running. So now we actually have an iSCSI data store running off of the iOmega NAS which is actually running in a VM. Next we'll go into the NFS settings. Make sure those are enabled. We want to make sure that they're enabled. And uh, we'll go into our shared storage. We'll create a folder. We'll call this iOmega NFS. Okay, that's completed. Now we'll go back into vSphere. In just the same way, we'll go into the storage, add storage, this time NFS or network file system, specify the management interface where this particular NFS target's being advertised, the mount point, in this case is NFS slash iOmega dash NFS, and we'll give it a data store name, we'll give it the same name, iOmega dash NFS. Select next, finish, and as you can see, our NFS data store is now available. We'll browse it, take a look.